Hello, this is Jenny Clark with Solvability. Today, I want to tell you about what's coming up for the Florida GovCon Summit. In 2018, I want to talk to companies that are looking to be virtually vertical. You want to double in size as a federal contractor. We want to have you there, talk about strategies to help you do that, hear from some other people that have been successful with it. This event is going to be in Orlando, February 28th through March the 1st, and we'd love to have you there. So what we'll be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about the business value drivers. As you're growing, you're trying to keep in mind what you have to be building in order to create a valuable asset at the time you're ready to exit, whichever way you choose to exit, whether it's an ESOP or selling to a large corporation, management buyout, selling to a family member. Let's talk about that. We'll have people to talk specifically about business value drivers in a special VIP workshop on Thursday morning. We'll also be talking about federal value drivers. In the federal market, what we'll be saying is that you have to have prime contracts in order to have value in your company as a subcontractor, those could immediately go away. What are you doing to build yourself, to differentiate yourself, to create intellectual property, create relationships and backlog that will build the value of your company? How do you scale your GovCon business? What are the steps to grow? There's so many ways that you have to think about moving forward and they call that the entrepreneur's dilemma. Do I invest so that I can do X or in order to do X, how much will I have to spend? And you're always concerned about where do I go? Which one is first? How do I do that? I want to talk to you about 20 benchmarks that I've developed that I want to start converting, ranking, comparing small businesses on because through my experience, I've noticed that each of the different companies I work with have different levels of maturity and across these 20 benchmarks, I want to really evaluate with them compared to their objectives. Some of them don't need a benchmark number 17. So let's talk about that, mark it off and say we're good. What I'm really looking for is what builds a successful company? What are the characteristics? What would you want to look for? So as we develop benchmarking, what should you be doing to grow your business? I also have a list of recommended reading. These are some of my favorite books. And I want us to be talking about this type of information at the summit. And we'll send out our reading list as we're getting ready. I've got a basic Florida GovCon Summit agenda I want to run through with you. And I also want to encourage you to join now for the Florida GovCon Summit. Our website is up at solvability.com. It says GovCon 18, and you can go to the page to register. So let's talk about business value drivers. And I have to thank my friend Jeffrey Gallo with Grennan Fender for sharing this information with me as part of another group that he's in with Russell Straffy and uh, Chris Bordner and several others where they did evaluation, build your business value. They're actually bringing that event to the Florida GovCon Summit. It's on Thursday morning. You'll be able to have the entire morning with them where they're explaining what those value drivers are. And I've heard these presentations so many times, but the one they put on was just so spot on. I said, you guys have to come to this event and have a special workshop. So not only did they agree to do that, but they said, hey, Jenny, what if for an extra $75 registration fee, we also gave those companies a valuation? By that, we mean a situation where you'll be contacted after you sign up for this special VIP offer and you'll be asked to submit the information to create a valuation package. And after the summit, representatives of the group will set up meetings with you to go over those strategies. Because the main thing you need to be keep, keeping in mind is this isn't a, oh, guess what? I just sold my company to my brother-in-law. This is something very strategic. You don't want to destroy the value by not going down a very careful path. And that careful path really is 18 to 24 months of planning. So they're going to tell you what it is, how to get there, and what resources you need to be thinking about and help you go through your questions like, what's my departure date? Am I trying to do it in two years versus a five-year plan? What kind of financial security am I looking for? 
do I have to have a lot of money coming out of this as a retirement asset? Or if I got a lot built up through the company in my 401k in other even non-qualified plans so that, yeah, this is the, um, this is the topping, but I'm good with here's what I want. And you're also taking into account um, other pieces of your personal financial status, even your health for that matter. What about your exit path? What are you thinking? Are you wanting to thinking that you'd sell to a family member? Or are you thinking that you'd want to be bought out by a larger company? Would you like to merge? Would you like to do an ESOP? What do you have in mind? It's your company, you should think. And from what I've heard in the federal industry, the ESOP route is very popular, but you've really got to think that through. Think about it now. What about cash flow? Cash flow is one of the number one issues for small businesses in federal contracting. Why is that? Because when you have a balance sheet, there's really no assets on your balance sheet. You've got your accounts receivable. You're usually using that to, to fund your line of credit. Very little cash because if you put cash in your company, it would be coming from the line of credit. You're always trying to minimize that. There obviously is equity in your company from having built in several years of profitability that goes into your retained earnings. But the question really is, where are you getting the cash to grow? Because it's not like you can go out and get a venture capitalist. They don't understand 5 to 7% profit is really good in the federal market. So where are you going to get the funds you need to grow? How are you going to generate cash flow through profit in order to fund the growth of your company? What do you think your business value is? What do you think it's worth? They're going to show you some of the formulas that are actually used in the industry and how they have certain discount factors, one of which being a small business gets discounted. It's not like you have a public valuation, but they've got some amazing tools and great insight to give you a better idea of what your company's worth. But more than that, to tell you how between now and your time that you want to exit, what should you be doing specifically to build the growth in that cup, build the value in that company? What about your personal assets? So much of what we do as small business owners is we don't really separate ourselves from our company. And if you've got business partners, you've got other issues that you have to think about because are the business partners in agreement as far as the strategy? Does one want to exit in five years and the other one says a young family is like, I'm, I need to stay in this business for 20 years. How are you approaching that? What do you want to do with that? We'll also talk about your growth and value. What kind of growth rate do you want? And how do you want to gear up? How do you want to, when is your going to be your burst? How do you maintain that? How do you sustain that? What is the present value of your company? And by that, we mean using financial calculations to say, if it's going to be worth X in 15 years, how much is it worth now? What kind of risk factors do we apply, do we apply for that to that? What about your management team? Are they going to stay in place or are they going to be suspicious something is going on and they start bailing and if they're part of your key value of the company, oh my gosh, you're not going to have any value of the company as soon as they start hearing about this. Okay, another really big one is minimizing taxes. So often I talk to companies and please, I wish you would talk to me in the fall before all this happens because you haven't spent money all year because you were having to save it, obviously. At the end of the year, you want to make sure that you don't pay that money in taxes, so you should spend it, but you should spend it by investing in your company. And I've heard executives from federal contractors say, you know what? In our third year of business, we had $300,000 worth of profit. I didn't plan for that. I paid taxes on all of that. I could have paid $100,000 to hire the right people to help me with their financial system, to help me with a 401k, all of the kind of things that I could have invested in my company, but instead I gave it to the IRS. So think about what strategic investments you could be making to protect yourself, to minimize taxes, and to make sure you're building the asset value. Operations. Are you ready from an operational standpoint? Is your company mature? Is it set up? Have you got your processes in place? Do you know what you're doing? Are there systems? Do you need to upgrade? What kind of track are they? Are they integrated? Where do you go? And then the last thing under business value drivers is financial control. Are you 100% owner? Are you 51% owner? Do you have partners you have to bring along? How is that all going to work for you? So that's going to be the business value workshop.
Let's talk about the federal value drivers. In the federal business, strategic relationships are number one. What agencies are you working with? How do you have past performance? Who are your primes and subs? Who are your teaming partners? Who's your management team? How, how deep are their ties? What about your technical subject matter experts? What about your professional subject matter experts? Are you a sought after partner? Are you one of those companies that everybody goes, I wanna work with them, I wanna be just like them. What about things that are inheritable if your company is acquired? Past performance to some extent, socioeconomic status, key skills, technology, investments, and leadership. Some of that's inheritable, but not all of it. Only in the socioeconomic does it work if you're also going to be going into a um, related, you're gonna be under related categories. Otherwise, they may not mean anything. Inherent is your intellectual property, the locations you built up, your reputation, um, your professional, your certifications, and your management team. So again, these are all pieces of federal value drivers that I really want you to be thinking about for your own company and how you're gonna build that up. A big part of what we're talking about at this year's Florida GovCon Summit are strategies for scaling your GovCon business. When a company starts out, all you're trying to do is get as much business in as fast as possible so you've got the revenue so you can grow. You're not really paying a lot of attention to being picky about who you grow with, except for this thing that you'll look for a basic profit percent that you believe. You're gonna work with companies you feel like are gonna treat you fairly. You're gonna have a good relationship. As you grow, you can start being a little pickier about that. And you're gonna see that this company, we had to sign 17 NDAs, and that company, we had a handshake, we worked with them, they, they kind of follow our way of doing business. We've got a lot of common customers and we see ways that we can work together. So the question is in strategies for scaling your GovCon business, what's your program management? What's built into that? How do you report? How do you manage? What about your business development? What's your pipeline? What do you go after? How mature are your processes for deciding, deciding who your target companies are and what you're gonna do with that? Um, in knowledge management, how are you collecting all of the corporate documents that are going to retain your company and help it grow? In finance and accounting, do you have an accounting system? Do you have a billing system? Do you have payroll? Do you have timesheets? Is it integrated? Where's it going? What's your reporting? How quick is your turnaround? Are you always waiting six weeks and not getting good information? That has to change. What about human resources? What about your recruiting and your onboarding? How are you bringing people on? How are you retaining them? How are you bringing them into your corporate culture and making them feel like they're real members of your company and not just, I got a new badge, I got new benefits, everything changed, hopefully I can stay with this company for four or five years on this contract, but I don't know. What about risk management? That's your insurance, that's your legal issues and how you're protecting your company as an asset. What we're really gonna be talking about in scaling your GovCon business is how are you surrounding your processes, your strategies by these different organizations inside that grouping. Here's my 20 benchmarks and I'm not gonna go through all of them in detail, but I wanted to talk to you about what this means and why I'm looking at it. When I look at a company that I feel like is mature and they're second stage businesses, what got them to that level of being second stage, and I define that by the way, is 10 to 100 employees, 2 million to 10 million in, in revenues. I call them that because they're steady and they're in a growth stage and they've got to learn how to compete still within the small business set aside markets but they don't want to outgrow their size standard too early. And I've seen a lot of companies reach that process and really decide to slow down or scale back. You want to know going in how fast you want to grow and where you want to take it. So DCAA compliance to me is one of the top areas because you don't want to put in a system, then start wanting to go after SBIRs or cost plus work and not be able to pass a DCA audit. It's like just, like, why, why'd you buy the wrong car? Why are you trying to put your new family in a Volkswagen bug when you know it's minivan time? DCA compliance is very important. You want to also make sure that you're following standard practices, and that's what DCAA compliance does. Indirect rate projections. So many of the companies that I work with don't really have a good 
grip on their indirect rates don't understand it. And let me just say, it's taken me 20, 30 years to understand it. I have ways that I can explain it to you, but I also know that if you don't have a good handle on what your fringe and your overhead and your GNA and what your target fee is for the companies you and customers you're trying to go for, you're just taking a shot in the dark on pricing. You could be leaving money on the table or you could be wondering, man, I'm, I don't understand why we're not getting these contracts in. We've got everything. What's happening? What about your BD capture proposal process? How defined is that? How strategic is it? What are your decision points? How do you make decisions? How often do you review it? How do you figure out for this next 12 months what we're going after and stay on track and not have somebody come in and, oh, guess what? I found something. How do you know that it fits? What about how do you present your capabilities and your website? What's your presence? How do you market yourself? How do you position yourself? What about pricing? How good are you at preparing pricing proposals and understanding what you want to go for? How do you price to win? Sometimes what I'm working with people on is they know what the price needs to be, but we have to come up with a reasonable way that they can back up that pricing and know that they're going to make a profit, but that they're competitive. What about invoicing and reporting? When you get your first contract, no big deal. You get to about five or six. Now you've got seven different uh, formats for invoicing. You've got different billing cycles. How are you making sure that you can get that, get out the door, and that your reporting is what your customer wants you to do? Number seven is integrated processes. Does stuff, does stuff integrate? Does it go together? Or have you got a bunch of different ones where, okay, we've got paychecks and those are employee IDs. We've got QuickBooks. We've got this. We've got a timesheet system. How do you get it all talking together? That is a huge issue. It's very complicated and it takes a good amount of time to get it there. You can't just say, let me just buy a new system and plop it in here and hope that in 60 days it's going to work. You want to move toward a process. And what I have for my integrated processes in working with companies is what I call a roadmap. First, I want to make sure that their current system, QuickBooks or whatever it is, is producing indirect rates, is doing their invoices, doing what they need to do. And then we start saying, where do you want to go? How fast do you want to grow? And how do we move you toward this? So we've got a process and a schedule, not, oh my gosh, we got to fix this right now. You can't grow and fix things at the same time. Too hard. What is your process for onboarding new contracts? Do you have a kickoff meeting? Do you um, talk to your subs? Does the program manager have regular meetings with contracts and finance? Um, do you know how to get the invoices in? Is thing, are things going smoothly? How do you get the word out? How do you celebrate? What's your recruiting process like? Of course, that's going to be crossing over human resources and recruiting and business development because they had to submit the resumes and the program manager. What's that process look like? How easy is it? Do you make people feel like they can quickly become a part of your company? What about human resources process? When we talk about all of these processes, we're talking about usually different functional areas. And by nature, those functional areas don't always get along. Human resources and payroll sometimes don't talk very well. Um, and it's because we have different timelines and different objectives. So uh, we want to talk about what your processes look like and how they measure up and could they be improved. Number 11 is contract administration. That's a big learning experience to understand the FAR rules and the other details that you have to be able to keep up with. Are you tracking mods? How are you doing it? Is it SharePoint? How are you making sure things are signed off? How are you flowing down information to your subs? Well, that's a lot of stuff. Program management. My job as a finance person is always to make sure that the program management manager has what he or she needs to communicate with the customer. And if that's not a priority for me, I'm not able to do what my job needs to be. IT. What are you doing for IT? Is it outsourced? How do you change passwords? How do you meet all the requirements? How many people are in that? People, are people like not telling you they've got computer problems because they have no faith that they can be fixed? Are they just frustrated and they don't tell you? Let's talk about cybersecurity. Of course, you've got the DFAR rules and you also have state rules and um, other controls you need to be educated on. How much of that do you want to try to do in-house? How much can you document to prove your compliance? That's going to be a bigger, bigger issue. And do you have the assessments that are required by the new DFAR cybersecurity rules? What about your FSO process? 
What's your clearance processes? Do you have an FSO clearance? Are you trying to get one? Do you know how to get there? Let's talk about it. Branding. Are you consistent all the way across the board? You're, is it professional? Are you consistent in your colors? Are you, do people remember who your company is and go, wow, I just love the way you present that on the website. I understood immediately what you guys do. What about your um, contract vehicles? As you're growing, you figured out how to get on different contracts. Are you marketing those contract vehicles? And one thing I heard that was really interesting the other day is the idea of getting on a contract vehicle, but helping that agency use that contract vehicle to market to other agencies for use. That's a pretty good idea. Financial capabilities. DCMA periodically will do a financial capabilities audit. They're looking to see if you have financial capacity to take on these contracts. Do you understand your balance sheet? Do you understand your profitability? Does it make sense? Do you send your balance sheet over to your banker and they, they, they just say, something doesn't feel right? You don't know why. Financial capabilities is something you have to get a handle on because you're gonna grow, you're gonna need more cash flow. You're also gonna wanna be able to pay yourself, compensate yourself fairly as the owner of the business. Well, how do you, how do you balance that need? What about risk management? Do you have legal? Do you have cyber? Do you have um, HR? Do you have insurance that's going to protect you? And a lot of this insurance is now required that didn't exist before. So definitely need to take a look on, at that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is advanced certification. In order to differentiate your, bit, your business, are you going to be ISO certified? Are you going after CMMI? Are you going to be doing EVM? What is it that makes you different and makes you strong? Those are the 20 benchmarks, and I'll be talking more about that. Here's our basic agenda. Don't hold me to it. Some of this may change, but Wednesday, February 28th, we're going to be at the Ballroom at Church Street in downtown Orlando. There are plenty of hotels down there if you're traveling in. We're going to be starting every day at 8. We're going to wrap up at 5. Wednesday night, there's a reception. We may add some other things to it, but just like in the past, we're going to have a business conference and then we're gonna have a separate veteran connections track to bring in transitioning veterans for networking and, and leadership and mentoring. Wednesday morning, we're gonna start with how to maximize the ROI of your bidding proposal. That's gonna be talking about, is your proposal work worthy? What's your gate reviews? How do you decide what to go after? Are you going after the right things? What's your strategic uh, position and what you're going after? We've got a keynote speaker with, uh, Retired Lieutenant General Thomas Baptiste in the National Center for Simulation is going to be talking to us about the simulation market in Orlando, where it's going and where he sees it going. We're also going to be talking about differentiating your GovCon business because if you're not doing something to differentiate yourself, then you're a commodity, just like everybody else. And as we know, commodity prices just drives to the bottom. That's not a winning strategy. You know you've got strengths and we've got to find a way to help you find what those are and work with you to make, make, help you make you successful. There's gonna be a matchmaking in the afternoon and some workshops so you can choose from, which, from different options on that. And we're still working out what those are gonna be, how many we're gonna have, and then that'll lead straight into the reception. Thursday morning, we're really talking about partnering for growth. You know you could have joint ventures. You've talked about the all small mentor protege. We're going to talk about effective teaming. We're going to talk about teaming agreements. We're going to talk about all kinds of different options related to that. And um, we'll probably throw something in there about protest because something new came out with the latest NDAA where companies that are going after protest are going to start feeling the pain if they had a protest and it wasn't sustained. So no more of throwing money to hold things up and hold on to contracts. There's gonna be some teeth to that. Our keynote speaker on Thursday is gonna be Roto Reuter from R Squared. And if you haven't heard Roto speak, he's an amazing former Navy pilot and he's got a lot of energy. He's gonna be talking to us about um, team building and other um, organizational issues. The, la the afternoon sessions on Thursday is going to be talking about aligning your team to your vision and mission. And we always want to be able to do that. We're going to have a number of panels and speakers talking about how we did it, what succeeded, how it worked, and how you can implement those. So this is a lot about a how-to conference for you to learn. 
I've got a list of recommended reading. I'm just going to rattle these off. Uh, these are just some of my favorite books. Bill Anton has written a book called Ascend, Forging a True Path to Your Higher Self. That's about self-knowledge. The Industries of the Future by Ross is about um, the different predicted industries and in it's cyber, big data, um, currencies, excuse me. Cyber, uh, cyber security and the thing and unmanned systems. And actually, we're going to be talking about that at this event. Dogs Don't Bark at Parked Cars with Jeff Pearsall and Eric Wright is about creating regional communities. And I'm asking them to come and speak at the conference so that they can talk about here's what we've done in Orlando from a regional entrepreneurship. And what I want us to focus on as part of the Florida GovCon Summit is how do we make this happen in Florida's federal communities? The Unstoppables by Bill Shillay is about entrepreneurial communities, how they grow and give specific examples, um, particularly related to um, team of teams type things. Uh, Navy SEALs, Israeli Defense Force, fascinating book, and he took a couple weeks ago. Um, Sebastian Younger talks about tribe, tribes on homecoming, and it's about um, how military returning from uh, back to civilian life, what the transitions are, and um, how we, as part of the floor, the veteran community, or families, members, and and uh, spouses, can understand that a little bit better. Thinking Grow Rich, everybody's read Napoleon Hill. That's a great topic. The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. Uh, Traction is a book by um, Gina Wickman that many people are talking about where it lays out really actionable things that you can do as a small business to put into place what you need to do to grow. Closing the Sale by Ben Brown. Ben Brown is an amazing sales coach that I've been working with and he's really changed my entire mindset on and I want you to hear from him and talk to him. Get Off the Bench by Sid Fuchs of Macaulay Brown, he wrote this um, several years ago and was a speaker at the 2017 event. And it was really all about get out there and create networks. Here's, some, here's a bunch of ways to do it. If you want to build in this business, you've got to be out there. You've got to be a leader. Save Your Time by Kevin Jans is about targeting in the federal market. Fabulous book. He really tells you straight out, if you don't want to be number one or number two in this market, do something different because you're not going to be happy. Team of Teams by Stan McChrystal. Uh, the Code of Trust by Robin Drake. He's a former FBI profiler. Uh, the Art of Invisibility by Kevin Mitnick is about um, cybersecurity and um, how people can use kind of common practice in there. The Long Tail is a book about, did you realize that there's like 70 something kinds of ketchup? How do we have that many kinds of ketchup? Well, now that we have infinite inventory, people can be found because of the internet. So you no longer have to have everything on the shelf, you can, people can find you. And that's really, to me, a big part of what I've been trying to do with Florida GovCon podcast is doesn't matter to me if there's only five people listening, if they're right five people. Presence by Amy Cuddy is about um, how to put yourself in the vision of what you want to do, how you want to present yourself, how you want to see yourself. One of my favorite books by Elizabeth Bill Gilbert is called Big Magic. And it's really a di what different way of thinking by the author of E Pray Love. And I listen to it on the on my car frequently. And the last one is The Art of Work um, by Pressfield. And it's really a very short book, but it's about it's about focus. So we've got featured VIP workshops. I've already mentioned the um, value builder. VIP workshop. Uh, we're going to have some M&A. We're going to talk about going virtually vertical in 2018. Um, we've also got benchmarking, risk management, um, making the most out of your exiting your company, uh, special sessions on GSA and VA contracting, a little bit on international contracting. So that will be very specific to the people that are working OCONUS. And then my favorite topic, indirect rate strategies. So um, we're hoping that you'll find a lot of value in this. So the question is, are you ready to grow virtually vertical in 2018? Um, you've got established strategic relationships. You've got past performance. You're a recognized teammate. People are looking for you. You have a lot of subs now. You may have some primes, but you're planning to grow with prime contracts. You're looking to handle 
complex contracts, including cost plus. Those are the things that differentiate you. Those are the things that allow you to grow, and that's where we're going to be focused. So I hope that I'll be able to see you at Florida GovCon Summit. If you're looking for information, solvability.com, GovCon Summit, GovCon-Summit, or you could just type in Florida GovCon Summit 2018 on Google, and it'll take you where you need to go. Thanks so much for joining me today to hear about this. I'm looking forward to um, hearing from you, and thanks so much.